Hi, my name is Erin and I am from Howell Greenhouse and Pumpkin Patch and I'm here to show you how to make a dried flower wreath. Uh, we started our dried flower journey in 1988 after the farm crisis. We used to be hog farmers but then we decided to switch to flowers. So we've been doing flowers for over 30 years now and I'm going to show you how to make your own wreath. We would like to thank Garden Gate Magazine for coming out today. So let's get started. So first off, let's talk about the supplies we will need. You will need a grapevine wreath. This is 12 inches inside, 14 inches outside. You can pick this up at your local craft store. You will also need some glue pillows because we are going to have to hot glue all of these flowers onto the wreath. And to put the hot glue pillows in, you're going to need a hot glue pot. Now this is hot, like really, really hot, like second degree burns hot, so you need to be careful with the glue pot. Not have around any kits. And you will also need, best part of all, dried flowers. Now some of these you can grow your own and some you might have to purchase. So we're going to use some status. This is natural blue colored status. This is celosia or coxcomb. You got amobium, blue salvia. I'm also doing some flamingo feathers. Some pink globe amaranth. Now a couple things you might have to buy would be some greenery, which this is mugwort. This has been preserved and dyed. It's been put in a glycerin to help make it smooth so it's not brittle. And it's also been in food grade dye. So it's not harmful to any pets or animals that might accidentally be around these flowers. And then I'm also going to do mountain mint. This has also been preserved and dyed. So the first step is I'm going to add my greenery to my wreath. I like to have my wreath propped up, but if you don't have anything to prop it up with, you can also lay it flat on the ground. But for this video, we're going to prop it up. So I'm going to take my mugwort here and I'm going to cut off, snap off these, snap off easy. If not, we also have some little clippers we could use. But I'm going to snap off a couple pieces here. And even though this piece is longer, I'm still going to use this longer piece because in the long run, this is just for a background. So Having every perfect piece all the time, is not, it's okay not to have a perfect piece. I'm going to strip this a little bit because you don't need all that extra green, plus it might make more glue to your wreath. So I'm going to stick this in my glue pot here. Remember it's hot. And then I'm going to stick it into this wreath, kind of tuck it in these holes of the grapevine. And if you don't like where you placed it, that's okay. You've got like couple seconds to pull it out and redo it. You can always re-glue. Now if you think this is too long, now is the time to break it off, strip the leaves, and make it a little shorter. So that we're going to green up the wreath first, strip the leaves, dig it in the glue pot. Now if you don't have a glue pot at home you, and you have a glue gun, that's fine too. It's just glue pot's faster. But also a glue gun might be more readily, readily available in your area. Now as I glue these, I glue them all in the same direction because you don't want something, let's see, I'll show you. You wouldn't want something like, like this because then it's like, now this would be okay if you were going to put a bow right here. But since we're all just going to make a solid wreath, I'm going to all stick to the same direction. So I filled up this wreath with my mugwort, as it's called, greenery. Now you can see there's a lot of holes. That's okay, because I'm actually going to switch to different greenery, because I want different textures, depth, and dimensions to my wreath. So let's fill the wreath up with this greenery now. Same process. Clip off little pieces. If they don't break off easy, use some clippers. And I'm also going to face them the same direction as I did my others. That'll help fill in some of the gaps. Now the thing with this mountain mint is it also has these leaves here that I'm going to use and just glue leaves. I don't necessarily need the branch part of the flower. So if you have any salal leaves or anything you've dried, you just put them just like that.
That also helps to add different texture. All the flowers today we are going to use have been grown here on this farm. Now I bet you're wondering, well, where can I get my own flowers? Well, your local hobby store would have them, but they'd be more pricey. Your best bet would be try, trying to find a local flower farmer and see if they do dried flowers. That would be the most economical thing to do on a budget. Now that I've added my mountain mint here onto my wreath, I feel like I have enough greenery to start adding some color. Now you will notice on my wreath that I might have some cobweb looking things. Like what are these cobwebs? I don't have a spider around here. It's actually the hot glue. So every time you pick up a piece of flour and you drink it over here, you do a big glob of glue, you create a spider web. Those are easy to pick up. You just start pulling them out as you go. It's easier to do it as you go versus at the very end because then you're just overwhelmed with them. They don't hurt you. They won't hurt your flowers, they just look like a spider had some fun. So let's add some color. I'm going to start out with my Celosia first because it's the biggest flower I'm going to use today and it's going to show the most on my wreath. And it's always best to work in odd numbers, so I'm going to probably put seven to nine Celosia heads on my wreath. So when I do Celosia on a wreath. I don't need this big long stem necessarily. I also like to just cut it off right here and then stick this part into the flat glue. And now I'm going to strategically place the next one far enough apart so I can get an odd number on here. Now if you think your Celosia is too big to match the others, that's okay. These are easy. You just kind of break it off right here. Now you have two more flowers. So that is the first step on my color. So now I think I'm going to move on to some white. This is a mobium. It's a little more fragile, so you'll have to be a little more careful with it. And since it's so tiny, I might want to clump it up with another piece. So I use two pieces at a time. And then you just go around your flower, filling in some holes, wherever you think it needs a pop of bright color. And you're probably thinking, oh, you still have a bunch of holes. Yes, that is true. I want to get all of my color in here first before I finish it off filling it in with more greenery. Because most people on a dried flower wreath, they want their color. They don't want the, necessarily the greenery. Now, I like the Amobium because it actually stays white. If you work with other flowers, other white flowers, when they dry, they turn kind of a brown peach tan color. And, this stays white. So if you're looking for a nice springy summery wreath, this helps make it pop. So I've added my pop of color there and I think I'm going to switch gears into a different color. So I'm going to go with my blue salvia. As you see all these other flowers, this one was round, this is round, and this has a different texture to it. Yes, it matches this greenery here, but it's a different color. A lot of people mistake blue salvia for lavender. Blue salvia is a little more durable than lav lavender. Lavender sheds everywhere. This does not shed, and it also retains its blue color. It's not that lavender color. Yes, you can use lavender, but I feel it's a little harder to do and for it to keep in a wreath. I feel like it would just fall apart. And I'm placing it the same direction as I placed my other flowers. As you can see on this wreath, I have it pretty full, but I feel like it needs a little bit more. 
I'm going to add more pink because pink's my favorite color, so I'm going to make it really pink. So this is called Globe Amaranth. It also looks like clover, but it, this Globe Amaranth comes in multiple different colors. Um, purple, orange, red, several shades of pink, but this pink is my favorite. So Globe Amaranth, Globe Amaranth is a little particular. Some stems are nice and wobbly, skinny like this. This is no good for making a wreath. You want nice, sturdy ones that stay. So you just tear it off like this. Stick it in your glue. And then also stick it in your flower. Now if you accidentally break off the stem and you just have a head, that's okay. That's what this glue's for, a wreath's for. It's best for this kind of things that the stem fell off and you just stick it on in there. You don't even need the stem necessarily. So let's add some more pink. So now that I've added all the color that I want to add, you can still see that there's some holes. That's all right. That's where we're going to do the last step of adding more greenier to fill in the holes, to even things out, because you can see how I missed over here on the sides of the wreath, depending on where you're placing this, how much inside you want to cover. So let's just finish out making it symmetrical. Sometimes I flip the wreath over because it might look good this way, but then I flip it over here and it doesn't look good that way. So you need to always round your wreath so you can always make sure it's nice in circumference. So I feel like I've got this pretty well covered, all circumferenced, everything placed where I want it to. Now it's time to hang it. You can either hang it on your wall or you can place it on the table and maybe on it as a centerpiece and put something in the center. Or if you are want to store it, you can store it in a cardboard box, in tissue paper or newspaper. We don't recommend a tote because it traps the moisture in because some of these flowers, since they've been preserved and dyed, they get affected by the moisture and they might weep or it might have a little bit of greenery come off of them because of the humidity of inside the plastic tote. So we always recommend in cardboard boxes so it can breathe. So this dried flower wreath here will last you for several years. Like I, I have some wreaths last up to 10 years. Now the one thing that you will notice with your wreath is it might collect some dust. Now there is a product out there that will help you combat the dust. It's called Dry Splendor. You can get it at your local hobby store. Um, you just spray it on, spritz it on outside, and the dust just drips on and off. Let it dry, hang it back up, good as new. This completes our demonstration for today. We would like to thank Garden Gate Magazine for joining us today. And if you have any questions or you, you want to know where to get certain products, feel free to reach out to us. All of our links to all of our different platforms is below.